Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Boonton Q meter type 190A. It is from about 1962 to 1965. And it is, of course, a tube based. It consists of uh, quite a lot of very special, uh, rare tubes. So that is uh, actually why I wanted to make this little video, because the unit was given to me as a little uh, given up project. Uh, the previous owner gave up on this one. And this is why all the screws are missing, uh, wires cut, uh, a tube is missing and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm of course not going to repair it or anything like that, but I will show all the really, really cool details inside this one. It is so beautifully well built. So the idea is you pull this apart into two halves with the screws all the way around here. Then it folds like this. Then you have, of course, a little bit of a funny problem because all this uh, front stuff here becomes a little bit wobbly, wobbly and uh, really difficult to handle, but you can't put it on its side and this way access the stuff and uh, poke around. There is a uh, connector here and a cable that is a little bit too short to do um, service because you want the power supply. Well, you want the, the back part to be a little bit away from this one. This consists of a high voltage regulator and a um, regulator tube, but there is something even more strange and weird about this unit. I will show you. Yeah, mine was of course uh, dropped, uh, so we have a really bad bend here. This maybe also explains why the rear plate is missing, a power cable cut, and also when I move, can you hear this clickety? All the cables in this unit, they crack when you touch them. Can you hear this? So the isolation here is completely craggedy, craggedy. And I bet this one is mains entry. And the fun thing is it goes directly to a transformer. Why? I would expect this to go via a power on off switch or something like that. Then power goes on via another one. This could also be, you know, maybe this is a step down transformer. Maybe this is not original. And also, if you look at the screws, this looks very much not original. All the other screws, they are a completely different size. So maybe this is a Europe voltage to USA voltage because this wire now goes in on the back side. We got some fuses. We got cables going here. Probably some of this goes via this to the front and the switch and then back again, I would suppose, right? And then here it goes back. Note those wires. We got two here and we got two here. Now the fun thing here at the back, we got this big hefty thing. And this one is a voltage stabilizer. So the input must be um, 95 to 130, 50 cycles. That is interesting. And output is 150 volt with a uh, power factor load, unit power factor load, output voltage stabilizer plus minus 1%. What the heck? And this is done, so it's an inductor. It's just like a transformer, but it goes into saturation. So it's a saturated core transformer. And by doing this with the saturation, this one actually regulates and stabilizes the output. It's just a passive uh, AC thing. Huh, pretty cool. So I think the voltage from this one then goes to that one. And this tiny little transformer is the transformer used in this entire unit. Yeah, that is the missing uh, voltage regulator tube. I, of course, found the list of tubes. So it's an OB2, 105 volts. 
So before we go super much deep into details inside, I think it's also important to have a little look at the outside. So since this one can measure Q factors, the idea is of course we adjust x q q and x and then it's the ratio between the impedance and the peak right so how much it peaks in a resonant circuit will be um, the q so here we can change the different frequency ranges and it goes all the way to 260 megahertz that is of course very very smart if you want to test your components for high frequency transmitters and stuff like that you can hear the cluggity cluggity and when you've selected the right ranges here you adjust your oscillator for that frequency and of course you dial until you have a peak and the resonance and all that kind of stuff and here is a an internal capacitor and the idea is you tune for resonance and you put in inductors up here lovely lovely let's look inside again so that will be the mains on off switch it's a little bit funny why didn't they use the double contact set here it will create a little bit more reliability a double potentiometer super beautiful the way they took those two and flipped them half and half like that up it sounds like one is wire wound and the other one is not so that will be the switches for the different tests calibration resistors and uh, yeah the on off switch but let's look a little bit more at the beautiful mechanics so that will be the frequency selector and the, look at that arm and it's made with forward and backward rotated um, steel wires so that's already pre-wound in both directions and this is why this is actually pretty stiff So in here there is a little carousel switch and we of course uh, need to go and open in here and have a little look click click and then there's a little micro switch to say if it's in or out don't you just love it and here look at that steel wire that goes i mean so it's a steel wire and it's a band, but I think the band is actually what's doing. The steel wire is the one that's connected to a spring. Yes, exactly. So there's a spring down there and then the, the band here. So this is a complete friction three coupling to, uh, I think it's a capacitor in there, by the way. But just look at that beautiful mechanics. I'm just crazy about the the way they designed stuff in the old days. And so down here is the, they called it a 1287. Uh, I normally call them ECC81 dual triode. And this is uh, for amplification of measurement signals. Up here we got the first super cute tube. This one is the 9005. Oh, it's difficult to hold the camera still here, but damn, this is a beautiful tube. They call them uh, acorn tubes. And uh, this one is only a diode. And it's also, oops, difficult. The filament is 3.7 volts, but it is rated up to 1.5 gigahertz. That little tube. So this is the other one of those fantastic Ahorn um, diodes. And it's of course located directly into the signal from this resonator. And here is where you adjust the capacitor. 
and it's just geared a million times. All those discs you see here, that's uh, the end stop, by the way. And uh, so this is a local pickup of the signal, and then it's rectified, and then you can transport the low frequency signal. And then the, this is exactly how the other one is also made. I think they're super, super beautiful tubes. I also opened into the oscillator, and this is done using two uh, 5718 triodes. They run a um, 6.3 volt uh, filament, and um, it is, of course, a push pull coupling. Let me try and dial that, will be the frequency bands. So it's, a, of course, a carousel switch and it's like really tough with the click clicks and the solder job in here is just amazingly well done look how beautiful all is done here i am totally impressed so it looks like quite a simple product but it's just so well built so I think that is more or less what I wanted to show about this unit, uh, really. Just all the build quality, all the mechanics. And uh, yeah, I hope you had a little bit of fun. See you soon. Bye bye.